In this presentation, I would like to review the different roles that muscles can play during movement. I think this really highlights how complex human motion is and uh, how difficult a task the brain has in even performing the most simple motions. I do think that an understanding of these concepts, however, is really key when we're designing exercise programs so we can target all the appropriate muscles in the appropriate fashion. So what we're going to look at quickly in this presentation are the terms agonist, antagonist, synergist, and stabilizer. So we all want to have big biceps like this gentleman here, um, but when we do an exercise as simple as a bicep curl, our muscles uh, beyond the biceps are also active. So I wanted to talk about how we can perform a simple motion like the bicep curl and use that to highlight these terms, these roles that muscles can play. Please remember that skeletal muscles, they are not intelligent. They can only pull the origin and the insertion closer together. So we have multiple muscles that cross often multiple joints, the biceps being a good example of it. It crosses three different joints. And therefore, when it contracts, it's going to move all three of those joints. In isolation, if you contract the biceps by itself, it will move the forearm, the elbow, and the shoulder. So if we want to do a true bicep curl and move just the elbow, we need to utilize other muscles to produce that motion. So as a quick review before we examine elbow uh, flexion and the bicep curl, let's just review the musculature that's involved and that we'll be utilizing in this example. Obviously, uh, the biceps is a muscle found in the uh, upper arm and it crosses both the shoulder and the elbow as well as the forearm. And the biceps obviously is called the biceps brachii because it has two heads, two parts that uh, are both going to cross the shoulder joint and cause flexion. They cross the elbow joint and cause elbow flexion and they cross the forearm and cause supination. So again, the biceps brachii is the target muscle uh, when we're doing a bicep curl. That's the muscle we're attempting to uh, cause hypertrophy in. Also crossing the elbow, but from the uh, on the posterior aspect, and important for a bicep curl, is uh, the triceps brachii. And the triceps brachii uh, is called that because it has three heads. Two of the heads don't cross the shoulder, but the uh, long head does cross the shoulder. And again, uh, so the triceps brachii as a whole can cause shoulder extension, uh, elbow extension uh, as well. Also, a small muscle called the anconius is uh, also uh, able to do elbow extension. There are two muscles that assist the bicep, uh, and they are called the uh, brachialis and the brachioradialis. The brachioradialis, we can see here, it is found in the forearm, but it does not cross the wrist, so it primarily does elbow flexion. And then deep to the biceps, if I remove the biceps, we can see it, is the brachialis, which again also is a very effective elbow flexor because of its position on the anterior aspect of the elbow. And then finally, another muscle that's of importance in this discussion is a forearm muscle called the pronator teres, and the pronator teres is going to cause pronation of the forearm. And again, it's going to help us in counteracting the supination caused by the bicep. So when we consider an exercise like the bicep curl, what are the functional roles that, that the muscles can play? Again, with a bicep curl, we're performing the motion of elbow flexion. The uh, terminology that we're gonna use, therefore, are the muscles uh, related to elbow flexion. And we're going to look at the terms agonist, antagonist, synergist, and stabilizer. So the agonist in a bicep curl or in elbow flexion is going to be the biceps brachii. And the agonist is going to always be the prime mover. It's the muscle that causes the motion that we're discussing. So again, in the biceps curl, that's the biceps brachii. If we were talking about hip flexion, the prime mover would be the iliopsoas or the iliacus muscle and the psoas major because that's their primary role and they're primarily responsible for that motion. So again, the agonist is the muscle that produces the motion that we're talking about. Muscles often have helpers or other muscles that can assist, and uh, that certainly is the case with a bicep curl. While the biceps tends to be the first muscle that's active during uh, elbow flexion, we quickly have two other muscles that assist in the case of elbow flexion, and they're going to include, again, the uh, 
brachialis, which is shown in this picture here, and then also the brachioradialis, which is this muscle. They both are perfectly positioned to do elbow flexion, and they assist the biceps in doing this exercise. So again, if you were to lift a very light weight um, against uh, resistance, against gravity. Uh, first muscle you would call into play typically is the biceps brachii. As you increase weight or as the biceps fatigues, you will rely more and more heavily on the brachialis and the brachioradialis. And that's why they are considered synergists of elbow flexion. Now, another muscle that's of, of note uh, is a group of muscles that are called the antagonists. So whenever we look at any motion, we have a group of agonists. They're the muscles that cause the motion and a group of antagonists that uh, do the opposite motion. So an antagonist is a muscle or muscles that do the opposite motion of the agonist muscle. Now, uh, when we're doing a bicep curl, really the antagonists don't come into play. Uh, they are going to, for the most part, be inhibited and uh, remain uh, for the most part silent and inactive. However, when we do motions very quickly, uh, if we were to do very fast bicep curls, we would use the antagonists to help slow the joint down at the ends of the range of motion. But again, the antagonists are the muscles that do the opposite motion. Uh, it, it's an important concept, agonist and antagonist, because often we want to uh, target both of those muscles in terms of strengthening and and uh, power production because we need to have adequate balance typically between the uh, strength of agonist and antagonist muscle groups. In the case of the elbow uh, flexion example that we've been using in the bicep curl, the antagonist would be the triceps brachii and the anconius. Now, also to note are the terms is the term stabilizer. Stabilizers are going to be muscles that are active during the action, but don't actually produce the action that we are uh, attempting to produce. Uh, so stabilizers are going to limit unwanted motion. There are two sort of subterms that are used for stabilizers. The first is the term called fixator. Again, a fixator is a muscle that uh, is going to eliminate unwanted motion. Uh, typically, fixator is used at the non-moving attachment site of the agonist. So what does that mean? Again, if the agonist is the biceps brachii in this example, the agonist crosses the shoulder and the elbow. The elbow is going to be what's moving. The shoulder is fixed. So muscles at the shoulder that eliminate unwanted motion um, caused by the agonist are going to be considered to be fixators. So we said that the biceps brachii causes shoulder flexion. So when I contract my biceps brachii during a biceps curl, my humerus will want to flex. Uh, to eliminate that flexion, your body will also contract the posterior deltoid, which will counteract the shoulder flexion and isolate basically the motion caused by the biceps to the elbow. So the posterior deltoid in this case would be working as a, a stabilizer and more specifically as a fixator. A neutralizer is a muscle that, that works at the moving site of the agonist and eliminates, again, unwanted motion. So again, at the elbow, the biceps brachii not only causes flexion, but it will cause uh, supination of the forearm. So we have a neutralizer that's active. And again, that would be the pronator teres. And the pronator teres is going to counteract that supination. So neutralizers and fixators are both just examples of muscles working as stabilizers. And again, we have this at any of the joints where we utilize a muscle that maybe crosses multiple joints and can have mul multiple actions. So we can see that when we're doing a bicep curl, not only do we have muscles active at the elbow or crossing the elbow, but we're going to have muscles muscles active in the forearm potentially as well as in the shoulder. These muscles are not necessarily activated, activated at a very high level, but again, they are eliminating unwanted motion so we can target motion to the uh, joint that we want to move. So hopefully this presentation clears up the different roles that muscles can play during movement at a particular joint. And I hope you understand now the term agonist, antagonist, synergist, and stabilizer. Also remember, muscles are not smart, so the elbow uh, flexion example that we used demonstrates that the biceps cannot choose to only move the elbow, that we need to have other muscles become active to help 
uh, uh, limit the motion to just the elbow because muscles can only pull the origin and, and insertion towards one another. And that other muscles obviously therefore need to be utilized to produce the desired movement pattern and guide the bones to move in the way that we choose to move them.